Hi everyone, it's Marissa with the Art of Ecology and today is our last day for our summer session of Trails to Tasting and we are going to end it off with a bang. We're going to make some bourbon mint jalep. It's a common summer drink with shaved or crushed ice. Very yummy and ugh, smells so good. We're going to investigate some wild types of mints first before we get to using our garden variety mint for the drink. Here we have some wildflowers that are classified as mints. And there's a couple ways that we can identify these as some wild mints. The first way is you see that there are like clusters of poofy parts where the, where the flowers come out of. And they are gathered at each of the nodes where the leaves connect to the stem. You can also identify them by the shape of the flower. If you look at them, you can see that they almost look where they are more tubular in shape, protruding from that center point. You can also identify them as being categorized as mints by feeling along the stem. And when you feel along the stem, let's see if you can see it here too, it'll be a square stem. Also, check out these leaves, and you can tell by their almost um, soft triangular appearance with a very pronounced venation and midrib here. But you can also use the leaf shape, and they're soft to the touch with tiny little hairs. And here's another type of wild mint. This is in the bergamot. Uh, classification however we can feel along the stems and it is still square so we know that this is in the mint family after all and if we look at the leaves and you see here mints have opposite leaf arrangements so in looking at any of these you can see the leaves are situated directly opposite from one another here again automatically I looked down and I saw these adorable little purple flowers. They're tube shaped and I saw that it had a square stem so right away I was able to know that it's in the mint family. You can also see by reference of my hand like how small some of these mints, these wild mints can be. I know that because they are wild mints that I would be able to harvest the leaves and use them as edible um, edible mints. Some of them may have more of a savory taste than a minty taste, but they would all be great in cocktails, salads, you know, whatever you're going to use them for, but we're going to use them today in our cocktails. So what you're going to want to do is you are going to want to find any sort of these wild mints around and you're going to want to just pick off some of the leaves. Be careful not to damage any of the flowers. We have quite a number of pollinators who are going to be using these flowers. And remember, don't pick all of the leaves. The leaves are what helps the plant complete photosynthesis and get their food and energy. So if you want to keep these plants nice and happy, we don't want to pick all of their leaves. Stay tuned for more upcoming in-person and virtual events on my website at www.theartofecology.com. You can also learn more about wild edibles, gardening, foraging for your own wonderful flowers and more on my blog here. And don't forget to snag a photo print or gift at my shop. A portion of all proceeds is donated back to wildlife conservation and habitat preservation efforts. Thank you so much for all of your support and now back to my program. So first we have to take our mint and if we remember how to pull leaves off, we pull them backwards off of the stem and pop like a couple in your cup you want to have that nice minty flavor so I'm gonna pull some off that's like four leaves 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I love mint. It's one of my favorite flavors. Okay, and then you're going to take about a tablespoon of white sugar and pop that in there. Using your muddler, you're going to smash it all together. You really want the sugar to take on some of that minty flavor. Ooh, it's so minty. Once you're satisfied with your muddled mint and sugar, we can add our crushed ice. And now we top it off with our bourbon. A lot of times you may see a whiskey julep, and the main difference between a bourbon and a whiskey is that bourbon is made with corn while whiskey is made with rye. So we're gonna want two ounces. So that's one and two. Now we top it off with a mint garnish. Isn't that cute? Very dry, but good. That dry sort of flavor from the bourbon really is enhanced by the mint, I think. And there you go. If you're looking for anything Art of Ecology or Trails to Tasting, you can subscribe to my channel over here. But this was the last Trails to Tasting for this summer series. But stay tuned, there may be more to come in the fall and in the winter.